In today's video, we are going to have a very rare opportunity to tie together three different topics this channel has been talking about over the last year to two years. Psychological operations, states' rights, and the situation in Venezuela all are going to come together to paint a much more accurate picture of the reality on the ground in Venezuela. Later on, we're going to watch about a 10 to 12 minute video from on the ground in Venezuela that's going to paint a very different picture. But in the interview that basically this video is, where they go around interviewing different people from different parts of the country, different walks of life in the country, we are going to see something called anecdotal evidence. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what this is, it's a psychological operations technique largely used by our media to take one specific instance and then wrap language and vocabulary around it to make you believe it is evidence of a much larger thing. That because things are such and such a way at that moment in time in that particular image that it represents everything around it. We've seen that. The, the big one, of course, is the people picking through the trash in Venezuela. They show 8 or 10 or 12 people that are going through, and then they make it seem as if that's the case for all 30 million people in Venezuela. When it obviously is not, we could show those images here. If you were to ask anyone, what is the reality of life in North America? Well, gosh, are they in downtown Philadelphia? Are they in the suburbs of the Midwest? Are they in a high-rise in Manhattan? Are they on the beach in Miami? Are they in the hills of West Virginia? What's the reality? And time plays into that as well. 1985, 1995, 2015. It just depends. It really does. And this is something our media uses all the time. Anecdotal evidence. The idea that you can take one specific image and one specific point in time and then make a grandiose statement about the reality of everything. I get a lot of people that come to my channel in the comment section and will say stuff like, you know, I have a friend whose parents know people from Venezuela and they say it's awful, therefore you're a liar. Okay, maybe for some people it has been. And in this video clip that we're going to get to real quick here, they show this. They absolutely show the technique. And they also reveal that there are people in that country attempting to use our media to promote a specific narrative. The people that are speaking to the camera don't realize who they're talking to. They have just made the assumption that all Western media all believes the same thing and is all working with D.C., and it's an amazing thing to see. It is from Venezuela Analysis. It's called The Other Venezuela. So without any further delay, I'm just going to go ahead and let this play because it is an incredibly well done piece of actual journalism. We've arrived amidst what appears to be an attempted coup taking place. So the Venezuelan opposition politician, Juan Guaido, has declared himself president. The U.S. government and other European countries have actually recognized Guaido as the legitimate president of Venezuela. Now, international media have been um, putting out daily reports, which make Venezuela look to be a war zone right now. But we've been traveling around the capital, Caracas, for a few hours. Um, and the streets are actually quite calm. There's just a lot of people getting on with their daily lives. Y nos pusieron todo el agua con los vecinos. 
se trabajó con los vecinos. Entonces, Chávez y la revolución para ti eran una importante, son, una parte son muy de importante, tu, de, muy importante. Pero importante para tu propia politización, pues. Claro, porque te da participación activa. Porque tú pasas por un proceso de participación activa donde tú realmente construye tu destino. Yo, eh, claro, que no es fácil. Hay gente que se niega, se niega a transferir el poder al pueblo. Votamos por Maduro. Para, ¿Y por qué votamos por Maduro? Porque es Maduro, no, no votamos ni siquiera por Maduro, votamos por un proyecto político. I think it's important to stop there and make the distinction about what that woman just said. We did not vote for an individual based on his personality, based on what he said. We voted for someone who said that they would allow the power to remain in the hands of the people for better or for worse. And that is the most important takeaway there. Con Barrio Nuevo, Barrio Tricolor. Esta crisis no es de ahorita. Ahorita está fuerte porque la oposición y el imperio norteamericano están desesperados. Algo necesita el imperio norteamericano. No sé si será petróleo, será gas, será agua. ¿Qué necesitará? Pero está desesperado por meter la, la, mano, la mano. Y aquí lo, la oligarquía que no quiere en Venezuela perdió. Bingo, what she says right here. And here the oligarchy has lost its privilege. Now, real quick, we're going to stop here, and I want to speak about one particular individual in our oligarchy. And don't think I'm picking on this one person, because this is just representative. This is Shannon Bream. She is a Fox News analyst, or pardon me, she's a Fox News babe, or reporter, whatever you want to call her. Now, she recently did a very important interview. I'm not going to mention the person's name, but point being... She makes four, pardon me, she is worth four million dollars. Now, I know a lot of you think, well, gosh, that's not that much. That makes her a top five percenter. Think about that for a minute. Someone on Fox who was a former lawyer, someone paid to lie and make you believe it and smile, is worth four million dollars in our country. That's all she does. But we'll get back to this. The oligarchy has lost its privilege. That's why DC's upset. Privilegio, porque la riqueza antes la tenía uno poquito. Ahora está siendo socializada. Following Hugo Chavez's death in 2013, and with the onset of an economic crisis in 2014, previous gains in reducing poverty and income inequality have reversed under his elected successor, Nicolás Maduro. But today the government retains significant support from the country's poor and is bitterly resisted by Venezuela's traditional elites. In the shopping center in the wealthy east side of Caracas, shoppers were adamant they wanted regime change. Today we see that there is a very great voluntary on the part of the democracies of the world in that Venezuela will be able to prosper. Do you think the government of the United States has had a role in the government? They have operated in pro to stop these people who are criminals and who today form part of the regime. So we want to thank you because we know that the international media has been rebuilt by the regime. So today, all the support of the countries, but also of the international media, has been fundamental. Now, that's very, very important to understand there. That girl thought just because the person interviewing was white, spoke English, and was from the Western media, that they were automatically on the side of regime change. That should tell you everything you need to know about the elites in Venezuela based in Miami. It was striking that opposition supporters viewed the foreign media as vital allies in their pursuit of regime change. As we left the shopping center, the restaurants and bars were filling up with Venezuelans getting ready to party. There was little sign of the humanitarian crisis the mainstream media are telling us is engulfed Venezuela. We're on our way to meet Jesus Garcia, who's a cultural activist. We're actually going to meet him in the Robert Serra Cultural Center, which was set up in 2014 after the assassination of Robert Serra, who was a Chavista legislator in the National Assembly. He was murdered uh, by paramilitaries who come over from Colombia. We're going to meet him in this house, which was actually burnt just a few weeks ago. Totally vandalized, set on fire by, by opposition militants. On the very same day, the Juan Guaido declared himself as president. Y quemaron esto, lanzaron un artefacto explosivo hacia la entrada y quemaron toda la parte de arriba. Y arriba había una biblioteca. ¿Por qué tú crees que... I'm sorry, but doesn't that look familiar from the humanitarian aid event? Just saying. Dijeron... Enfocarse, atacar este lugar 
en específico? Yo creo que es el odio. El odio que ha promovido la oposición en el país hacia todo lo que ellos denominan como chavista es lo que genera que mucha gente de repente vea una casa cultural con el nombre de un, de un compañero, un camarada chavista como lo fue Robert Serra y <ríe> busquen atacar la casa por el simple hecho de que se llame Robert Serra, por el simple hecho de que identifique una relación con el chavismo. Over there is the U.S. Embassy, where diplomats under both Republican and Democratic presidents have been working to overthrow the Venezuelan government for the past 20 years. Prior to 1999, Venezuela was seen as an important and reliable ally to the U.S., precisely because of its vast oil wealth. But when Chavez was elected in 1999, that changed. In 2002, Washington supported a military coup which briefly saw Chavez overthrown. And according to U.S. government documents, between 2000 and 2014, the U.S. donated around $90 million to opposition groups. This figure is now likely to be much higher and increases even further if you also include secret covert funding. Okay, that individual, that gentleman in the back that had his hand raised is a man named Pedro Carmonas. If you look up the Carmona degree, decree, pardon me, as soon as that guy took office, he suspended the Constitution and immediately instituted martial law. That is exactly, or their version of it, why his reign only lasted a matter of hours before the people took their country back. That's how powerful so the states' rights movement, what we would equate, equate to the states' rights movement, and the power at the local level is down there. In 2014, Barack Obama declared Venezuela a threat to U.S. national security and imposed sanctions, which affected government officials, but also Venezuela's ability to borrow on the international market. But since becoming president in 2017, Donald Trump has escalated Washington's regime change efforts to unprecedented levels, openly declaring that a military invasion could be on the table and hitting Venezuela with a de facto financial and oil embargo. The effects have been catastrophic, reportedly costing Venezuela $6 billion just in lost oil income to date. In a devastating indictment, the first UN rapporteur to visit Venezuela for 21 years said the sanctions are illegal, are killing Venezuelans, and could amount to crimes against humanity under international law. This guy just came out and said that he thinks a military intervention is what they need. He must think that bombs discriminate. Okay, once again, another lie. A lot of people come to my channel and say, they took away their guns and it's illegal to have a gun. No, it's absolutely not. You have to be a trained and registered member of the militia, which is what I'm for here. Absolutely. I'm not anti-gun. I'm just thinking if you're going to have a weapon and your idea is because you want to uphold the Second Amendment, I'm for that first part of the sentence, the whole well-regulated militia type. See you at 0500 at accountability formation. Let me cover that real quick. This is something that our media doesn't talk about. Due to the huge, ongoing, decades-long war in Colombia between the left-wing and right-wing paramilitaries that were created by U.S. corporations down in Colombia, millions have had to flee that country into Brazil, Ecuador, and into Venezuela. The Colombians that went into Venezuela were welcomed with open arms. They were given food. They were given shelter. They were given health care. They were given education. 
And you didn't hear the media crying and whining and moaning about evil, terrible, horrible socialism then, did you? I want you to look at this housing project real quick. Does this look like slums to you? This is where states' rights states rights ties in. Donde es como una especie de gabinete. Hay voceros de servicios, hay voceros de economía, hay voceros de deporte. Siempre hay limitaciones, pues. Las limitaciones se basan en que el Estado es burocrático, el Estado es lento, eh, que el Estado, que el Estado hay gente que apuesta que esto no funcione. Hay relaciones que son eh, difíciles, hay relaciones que son más sencillas. Por ejemplo, esta cancha que vemos aquí va a ser reparada gracias a un convenio, como una alianza que estamos haciendo entre el Estado que es el que está poniendo los materiales, pero ellos pudieron habernos dado una contratista, una empresa privada que la acomodara, que dijimos nosotros como comuna, danos los materiales y nosotros mismos lo vamos a resolver. Just imagine here in the States, if you had a section of road or part of the um, highways that were just not going, not fixed over and over and over again, and you could just go and say, you know what, give us the materials, we'll do it in our time ourselves and save the state the money. Imagine if you could do that here. While it's clear that the economic and political crisis in Venezuela is real, the mainstream media's version of events looks very different to the one that we've seen on the ground. El socialismo, decía Chávez, del siglo XXI, lo inventamos nosotros, lo creamos nosotros, buscaremos la forma de sobrevivir, lo buscaremos, pero para atrás no vamos a volver, porque nosotros vivimos, yo por mi edad, por mi edad, que yo tengo 50 y un poquito más, tengo, por mi edad te puedo decir que he vivido los dos modelos, y le digo a mis hijos y a mi nieto, para atrás ni para coger impulso. That's very important. To understand that woman's 50 years old she understood what life was like before chavez she was alive during that time she understood very clearly the difference the message coming from government supporters was also loud and pardon me i guess the, the part of that that i didn't explain most of the opposition is too young 
They are not. You don't see opposition people that support Wido that are in that age range. Unless they're the super, super wealthy, like that elderly woman. While they're afraid of any U.S.-led military invasion, they're also equally determined to defend the Maduro government in their revolution. Chavismo se planteó la construcción de un mundo posible, no solamente de un país que los gringos no quieran invadir. Bueno, tampoco vamos a bajar la cabeza ante eso. Si nos pensamos un mundo, menos le vamos a bajar la cabeza a los gringos. Vamos a seguir con dignidad y vamos a seguir construyendo el socialismo aquí, eh, como se pueda, cuando se pueda y con lo que se pueda. Lo vamos a construir. All right, so that's basically the story. So, you can believe whatever you want about what is good for Venezuela, that anyone would believe it's DCs to decide, fundamentally misunderstands the concepts of freedom and what this country used to stand for. There are parts of Venezuela where it's worse than others. And is everything easy and wonderful and great? No. And are they going to continue to have issues and problems? Yeah. As long as the criminals in D.C. decide to continue to maintain the sanctions and basically a financial blockade of the country, they're going to have no shortage of footage to be able to put in front of you and no shortage of pretty blonde former lawyer Fox News babes to make you believe it's the situation everywhere in Venezuela. So I just wanted to put this out here and show you very clearly that there is another story. We have multiple stories in our country. Depending on where I was and when I was, I could make it seem as if this country was ready to fall apart and collapse. I could make you believe that it's the wealthiest country on earth. I could make you believe that it's a bunch of hippies, or I could make make you believe that it's a bunch of uh, armed um, hill folk ready to rise up and overthrow. It just depends. It's a large country. It's a diverse country. And if you're looking for one answer that covers everything, you'll never find it. So I will leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.